What's happening, baby? A lot is happening, Foxy. Now, I wasn't able to get an exact location, but I did learn that Dr. Evil has moved to a new lair outside of Tokyo, Japan. The head of the International Atomic Energy Agency has set his sights on Fukushima. He says inspectors will visit the crippled nuclear plant to investigate a leak of radioactive water. IAEA chief Yukia Amano was speaking at a board meeting in Vienna. One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. The leak of contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi is a matter of high priority that needs to be addressed urgently. The agency's experts visited in April to check up on the plant's decommissioning. Amano said they recommended effective measures for the long-term management of liquid waste. Japanese leaders have committed $470 million to the toxic water leak. They plan to isolate the plant from groundwater with a wall of frozen soil underground. The ice wall, the whole thing, is just, it's all right out of the playbook. It's a scam and it's not going to work. The announcement by the Japanese government of a basic policy for addressing this issue is an important step forward. Japan's UN ambassador Toshiro Ozawa spoke to the IAEA board. He said Japan will keep them updated and cooperate fully. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Japanese prosecutors have concluded they won't press charges against the people in charge at the time of the nuclear disaster in Fukushima. So far, executives with Tokyo Electric Power Company and former Japanese Prime Minister Naoto Kan will be spared a court battle. Welcome aboard. <laughs> My mistake. What was that? <laughs> Residents of Fukushima wanted someone to be held responsible for the meltdowns and the aftermath of Fukushima Daiichi. So they filed criminal complaints against former TEPCO executives, including chairman or former chairman Tsunehisa Katsumata. And they filed complaints against government officials, including the pri uh, then Prime Minister Khan. Prosecutors have been investigating whether company and government leaders were able to predict an earthquake and tsunami of that magnitude. They concluded the officials were not able to foresee the effects of of such disasters and they say they will not press criminal charges yeah. sorry about that old chap sorry you know <laughs> Bloody mole we're not supposed to talk about the bloody mole but there's a bloody mole winking me in the face Evacuees from Namiya town, which is in the Fukushima no-go zone, have expressed mixed reactions to the prosecutor's decision. They've been forced to live outside the town due to high levels of radiation. I cannot understand why no one has been indicted for what happened in Fukushima or why prosecutors should be in a position to decide culpability. I'd like the prosecutors to investigate the politicians who approved the construction of the plant and the people who dealt with the accident. Authorities should focus on helping evacuees rather than finding out who is responsible for the accident.
people in Japan are expecting the Olympic Games to provide an economic boost. NHK World's Kyoko Fujita reports. The market in Tokyo start the week with strong gains following Japan's win. Investors here in Tokyo's financial district are celebrating successful bid. They hope the country's upbeat mode will help lift share prices. I expect it to add to Abenomics. We're hoping that heading into 2020, the Olympics will have a positive effect on the economy. After Prime Minister Shinzo Abe took office late last year, Tokyo stocks started to rebound, hitting the 15,000 level. But share prices dropped in May over concerns of a possible wind-down of U.S. monetary easing. Stocks have since been sluggish and traded in relatively low volumes. Investors believe the Olympics will help. I predict share prices will pick up, as the successful Olympic bid will attract foreign investors. That will help boost the already recovering earnings of Japanese businesses. Businesses are acting. Some have launched Olympic sales. This one sells cakes decorated with swimmers and judo athletes. Our expectations are high. I think people will be more inclined to shop. Bid committee officials in Tokyo estimate that the service, construction and other industries will see around $30 billion worth of economic benefits through 2020. They also project more than 150,000 new jobs nationwide. Roads, railway and other transportation infrastructure, primarily access to competition venues, are also expected to be upgraded. But some analysts have expressed concern about how much the eventual costs may be. Tourism is a part of the government's growth strategy. It plans to attract around 20 million foreign visitors a year with promotions based around the Olympics. The lodging sector has also began changes. I'm sure an increase in foreign guests will be a big opportunity for our business. The Olympics will likely boost the economic activity in both the public and private sectors. But the question is whether Prime Minister Abe will be able to use the world's biggest sporting event to revive the economy and manage the country's finances at the same time. And Prime Minister Abe will finally make that long-awaited decision on Japan's consumption tax hike on October 1st. And this is according to Economic Revitalization Minister Akira Amadi. But Amadi does caution that Abe must be careful to avoid damaging the economy. If Prime Minister Abe decides to raise the tax rate, an economy-boosting package will have to be announced at the same time. Amari also said the scale and content of the package will determine whether the country can climb out of its deflationary spiral.